Yeah, Skeldon, you are a uh, asshole for thinking that, you know, widely regard, like, kind of not widely known tank knowledge is what everybody should know as common knowledge. It kind of makes you a selfish asshole. Anyways, like, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 18th of July. So, if you go ahead and feel free to keep with the audio and everything, I really don't care. Uh, I'm here, too. But not partaking. I don't know what you're playing, so... Dawn of War Soulstorm, going through the campaign. No. On hard! No. Because we ride hard! Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys listen to the intro cutscene. It was the sudden appearance of a warp storm at the Kaurava system's I outer want to get on Steam so that first on. caught the attention of the Imperium. And not Anything just the Imperium. Stay. After hundreds of years under the neglectful watch of the Imperial Guard, nearly every force in the galaxy would descend upon the planets of Kalkava, bent only on domination and victory. Three races had long dwelled in there. The Imperial Guard, its supposed rulers. The Orc tribes of Kalkava too, which the Guard had never successfully put down. And the Necron, who had slept undisturbed for untold millennia beneath Kaurav the Three. Where the Chaos Marines came from, or how, not you can say. Did the Warp Storm bring them, or did they bring the Warp Storm? Both appeared suddenly on Kaurav the Four, and in an eye blink, half the system's Imperial forces were gone, killed or claimed by the madness of Chaos. In quick succession, the others brought to Kalava. The Space Marines, the Imperium's super soldiers, descended on Kalava too, planning to finally cleanse the system. I'm letting them watch the intro the cutscene, you can't. And the Chaos Marines, the sworn mortal enemies. The Tau appeared next, not far above, on one you of know, the planet's moons. The in, in the interest silence. of protecting its ordered empire from the effects of human folly. The Tau came seeking to contain the Warp Storm, and in so doing, expand the territory's border. On their moon, they built a mighty fortress, and there forged a space cannon capable of interplanetary devastation. Among the wastes of Kaurava III, the Necrons, perhaps awakened by the disruptive forces of the Warp Storm, slowly massed their lethal legions. In quick response, webway gates, long unused, flickered to life, and Eldar poured forth, ready to battle their dark, death-dealing adversaries. Meanwhile, in the shadow of an ancient portal gate, the dark Eldar slipped stealthily out of the murky depths of the webway. They would be like carrion birds, flying above the battlefield, and when all were weary from the fight, make the battlefield into a feasting ground. Last to arrive, and perhaps most to be feared, were the Sisters of Battle, holy maidens and bearers of the God Emperor's faith. They had come to cleanse the system of corruption and filth. Their faith left them fanatical, unafraid of death and solace in the cars. Nothing here was clean. All must be purged. Now, war rages anew, and only the victorious may write their history. Only the victorious will claim the planets of Kaurava. Okay, welcome ladies and gentlemen. I feel free to let you guys listen to that because I think it should be that way. You guys should listen to that cutscene in its full effect because... Dark Crusade tends to be my favorite because of its just its atmosphere and its story is better written and is actually... I feel it covers a lot more and it gets a lot more... It's not afraid to write individual stories about individual territories and tell you, say, in a cutscene and actually have it matter on a battlefield, on the map that you are on. Like, for instance, in Dark Crusade, hell, you 
fight to feed souls to a demonic presence in an area for no reason other than to secure its favor. Regardless of what faction you are, you accept that this could give you a military advantage, and you proceed with slaughter. Because regardless, it feeds on the slaughter of Cronus anyway. But anyways, these are the factions that you can choose from. Chaos. Dark Eldar. Eldar. These are the common, more, com more commonly referred to as Craftworld Eldar by most. The Imperial Guard, with their squishy, normal human bodies. The Necrons, Solus Roa Automatons, that do not have free will, and do not ally with other races, and do not smile and have Egyptian themes. Orcs. You've seen a great deal of these in probably in, War ha in Total War Warhammer videos from me, but these are the true Arc fucking orcs. These are in space and are otherwise pretty much the same. No, they're space. fucking no. awesome compared to the goddamn Total War Warhammer orcs. These are the fucking orcs. These are, huh, you have space technology, don't care, we're still gonna shoot fucking bullets through space. And a lot of what they, and a lot of what they do works because they think it works. This is a battle commonly referred to as Bolter Bitches. Commonly hated as the term Bolter Bitches by many. <clears throat> However, I commonly will refer to them as Flamer Fanatical Son of a bitches, what the fuck is going on? That is really broken that they can just convert all of their weapons to armor piercing everything. Essentially, they can turn all their weapons into Melta but via the power of the faith in the Ecclesiarchy and the false faith that they have in the Emperor because technically the Ecclesiarchy said fuck the Emperor and made their own standing army of women by using a small loophole in the contract that they signed with the god emperor that said they couldn't have a standing army of men so they built boobed warriors essentially however the way that uh, the way that from what i can tell dawn of war lists them they have the they have the exact like sisters of battle the standard battle sisters have the same damage and melee as a troop of Imperial Guardsmen. So, as far as I'm concerned, they're normal humans. In power. Yeah. We have the Space Marines, which are by no means normal humans in power armor. These fucking... Stupid, stupid super soldiers. Like, if you have any way to make super soldiers really stupid, and... Lore breaking, really. It would be these guys. Them, and if you lock them in prison, they're just gonna eat through the bars. Literally eat through the bars. And vomit acid. And go into a catatonic state to repair massive wounds. And basically break the entire lore of Warhammer 40k over its knee because in the lore, basically nothing could ever beat the Space Marines. Ever. Even the Chaos Space Marines, because apparently the Chaos Space Marines are usually Space Marines that are just really old and thus have weakened armor. Even their ships have weakened armor. Because the Chaos recruiting, like, their recruitment facilities aren't that great because they constantly have to burn them down for the sake of the Chaos Gods and run away. So they can't exactly draw the new forges of Mars and everything. Instead, they're provided shitty equipment by the warp. Apparently shitty equipment. Shitty equipment. I don't know why they're given shitty equipment. Because I guess the Chaos Gods, want, you know, don't want to win. But anyways, here are the Tau. Space Communists. They are quite literally Space Communists. Space, commie, 
weeaboos. How are they weeaboos in the slightest? Because they're very anime-esque in their in their weapons. How are they very anime-esque? They use, they use giant plasma robots. Weapons. They use giant robots, and they speak in a somewhat Japanese voice. Okay, that's racist. Yes. No. I'm racist stuck in the workshop. Well, no, that's just racist to s assume that because they're because they sp if you speak in an Oriental thing that they're racist. Look, they even designed them to appeal more to the fucking East than to the West. Who did, and at what time? Games Workshop. At what time? And when the Tau was released. Well, regardless, in actual style, the Tau are not really weeaboos. They're communists, they're space communists in government, and they... Honestly, some of the shit that they do isn't really all that out there in terms of government because they invade a planet where they want to colonize it and they stop the local populace from breeding, which isn't that different from what America did when they invaded North America and took over with the Native Americans and told, uh, told them, here's some blankets, oh wait, did those have smallpox in them, oh wait, we did that on purpose. Po we were popularizing genocide before Hitler was around. And if the humans try and break free and just be themselves, well, it's gulag for them. No. No. It's Tau gulag. No. As the... As a certain cutscene displays, it's the Krutox. Well, no, it's the greater Narlok for them. I'm not kidding. Mm. Yeah. Those that refu re refuse re-education get the greater Narlock. Anyways, I'm going to be playing through this campaign on hard, and because I used to be able to play on through this game on hard, I might be a little iffy on my skillage, but we're gonna go through it on hard anyway and just to kind of secure my victory I may I'm probably gonna go through all the races given how this is like how much I love this game honestly the Dark Eldar were the ones that really took me the longest to learn although for some reason I picked them up pretty quickly I don't know why but you still refuse to get all the games you you had all the games at one point from what I could tell but you refuse to give, you know, the rightful money to the rightful people on your other Steam account. And you were shocked that they took away the games that you didn't pay for. <laughs> Anyways, for each faction you have a global uh, resource effect that is unique to your race. Now, now what I'm going to show you is the most piss poor thing in this game because the rest of this game is fantastic but here's the most piss poor thing um soul storm a different from dark crusade and dawn of war and dawn of war winter soul added flying units that's not the piss poor part the piss poor part is this is in dark crusade and in soul storm welcome to the single player campaign welcome to the war single soul player storm. game i don't care about your Windows. tutorial piss off yeah anyways you can reinforce your territory by spending requisition that you earn every turn based on how many territories you own. Whenever you start out as a faction, you will always be the faction that has one territory. Well, it seems like the other races have been quite fucking busy and were play and had played like five turns in your stead. Because if I started out as Eldar, I would only have this territory and the rest would be taken by the Necrons. It seems that it's like the... Okay, I likes to cheat. No, that's... No, actually, the AI in this doesn't cheat that much. Really. As far as I know, the AI doesn't cheat that much. Although, on mm. harder difficulties, I'm pretty sure they actually boost the AI's income. Also, the AI can tell where you are, even if they can't physically see you. Eh, that's fine. Fine. Eh, that's fine. So, I can see them, too. So, yeah, so, basically, so basically, it's bounced. Yeah, but if you're playing against the Imperial Guard, the Basilisk can hit you, even if they can't physically see you. Because they can no. See no. Yes. It's bull. No. 
The AI can always see you. They do not have to have units near You're you. You're kidding me. No. I've never had that be a thing. I've gone through this game several times on hard. I've never had that be a thing. Every time they could see me, they scanned me. The Imperial Guard in this, in Dark Crusade, and in this, have a scan. It's yeah. essentially like yeah. a very Terran-esque scan. Yeah, but I can still see you even when they when it's on cooldown. Yeah, but they can't hit you. They can't yeah, physically they can. shoot you. I don't think the Imperial Guard has any stealthy units. I've still been hit by bad. They have there. stealthy units, several of them. Well, there's the Assassin. They have the scan that's very hard to see, honestly. It's a very f transparent thing. Mm. But yeah, I played this game and never had any problem with the Imperial Guard hitting me with... Like, whenever they could see me, I would always see something trying to melee me from the cloak. I'm like, hmm, I wonder how you can see me. As I hear a unit going... Yeah, I need vision to see something. What? The AI doesn't need vision to see something. That's what he's hitting you. What? It said the AI is hitting you because they don't need vision to see something. No, I'm saying that I would always hear cloaked units hitting me whenever the AI was hitting me and I was wondering how they can hit me. Oh. Anyways, here's the uh, war gear tab. By the way, also, it's easier for people to understand you when you don't, like, go really like this and start getting giddy uh. over your own self. Anyways, range damage, melee damage. This is actually kind of weird because not often does uh, Dawn of War give you a stat layout. Like, it, it will give you a estimate of how much damage they can do between a certain number and a certain number. Like, I'm not used to seeing 138. I'd see 138 to 225. Instead of... Well, no, no, it'd be more 175 to 225. But in on, the thing that isn't in the normal game is the Spoils of War. These will be the cutscenes that you will that you can click on these to see basically the taken heads of your enemies. And it will take you to a cutscene where the, uh, the effective... Eulogy for their death, which is usually about how your forces con how your forces conquered them afterwards. However, you don't get to see like the ending cutscene of when you beat them. You just get to see kind of like the announcer person who has a great voice sitting there and talking about how the your altered timeline essentially of you winning because the yeah. the actual written analogs of how these battles end play out in Dark Crusade and in Soulstorm have been overridden by douchebags, or what I like to call people that require these games to be canon. I gotta tell you, non-canon games, best canon games. Mm. As you... Because they don't have to worry about things like making sense in the future Well, games. no, they just don't have to worry about a lot of restrictions. Yeah, it's like, hey, can we do this? No, we can't do that because you have to do this in another game. Oh, shit. You don't stop. You're just confusing the user. Like the fucking Yes, that is that is the name for our fan base. The oh, users. Must confuse. But anyways, as you achieve certain challenges, you will be able to get these gear you will be able to choose from one of these gears. Once you have all of the gears, you're usually able to unlock a special version of your character or a special arm armament that requires all the gear. The Necrons do not have that. For the Chaos, you, uh, for instance, once you have all the normal war gear, you can, which it's very hard to get actually all the war gear a lot of the time. Once you have all the war gear, you will have the, you will have, for all Chaos at least, for the Chaos, you will be able to ascend to Demonhood, which means you will be, your Chaos Lord will start out as a Demon Prince which means his model will change to a far different model. He will be actually part, like the part of the tech tree that in the normal game, which will usually advance you to, well, to Demon Prince, you will just start out with the Demon Prince. Because you always start out with your commander, which is also unique to the campaign. You start out with your commander always. Also, you're a host of Honor Guard, which you will earn by securing territories. And you will pay for those Honor Guard to enter with you into the battle by 
plan by actually paying with them via requisition, which you also need requisition to reinforce your la. Why can't I? There we go. Reinforce your territories with units. This these will start out when you have these territories, and when other people invade, if you if your commander is there, he will spawn in as well. If he's not there, these units will be the ones that will back you up. You can also reinforce it with faction like this, with power generators. It will allow you certain amount of units. You can't get like, you know, the highest tech. But I believe in Soulstorm. I forget if in Soul. I know in Dark Crusade, if you built up a bunch of structures in a territory, and then the other, then the enemy attacked that territory after you secured that territory, they you would have all those structures. I think Soulstorm took that out, but we'll have to see if I get if I even have to defend during this campaign. Depending on how well I do, that is often why I don't actually get the challenges. The challenges of this game, one, a couple of them are like defend five times, defend f ten times, defend fifteen times. Those are usually the challenges that I fail to achieve because I often if I want to win, a lot of the time I avoid directly fighting like a lot of my enemy in defense and I l rarely give my opponents time to defend to force me onto the defensive hmm. anyways how are we doing on time about eight minutes I was going to say before you start can you get on Skype so I can watch without the stupid delay no because I would kind of ruin the recording Shut up. That's all I got to say to that. <laughs> Just shut up. <laughs> shut up. Anyways, let's see here. I'll get the Death Touch, Necropolis Death Touch card, as opposed to the Ancient Gates, which Ancient Gates in this allow you to access several territories. Like this, to this, to get... It's basically to get around planets. The only one that's unique is the Dark Gate of the Dark Eldar, in which you can't invade their specific re their specific home planet until you get this territory right here. At least I believe that's the case. Necrons. Yeah, and yes, I do believe that is the case. And the game kind of indicates where you can invade. People often get confused, but the game do goes out of its way to demonstrate to you this shit. Like, you can only go to the Tau homeworld if you freaking go here. Because, look, hey, you can also go here. Ooh. Anyways, I want the 50 requisition gained from this and the 25 from here. Now, you can auto-resolve battles in this, but that's for pussies. As for it is in most games. Auto-resolve or get the fuck out. Except for when it's a pitifully small army in Total War. Eh, that's just tedium. But you're the asshole if you go into battle against the pitifully small army. Eh, that's just when you're wasting other people's time. Otherwise, just kill everything. Murder, slaughter, kill, bane, burn. You know what's weird about the uh, calculator that calculates uh, the chance of you winning and auto-resolve? You know, that bar... Yeah, what about it, man? Uh, like, if you're playing like, vampire, like the whole counts. the problem is, dude, is like recording wise. I would really like it if you, you know, didn't delay your speech like you normally do. Sorry. Anyway, the weird thing about it is, if you're playing vampire counts, having zombies in your army actually lowers the chance of you an hour for some reason. Even the game knows it's garbage. <laughs> so much garbage it's subtracting from the rest of your army somehow. Anyways, let me see here. I think there's a problem. Uh, persistent bodies high, unit occlusion, terrain detail, uh, uh, inverse de attack bodies. mode by default, that's stupid. Event cues, that's fine. Scroll rate, up that a little bit. Okay, far better. Sorry to anybody that's gonna probably gonna get motion sick from that a little bit. You don't even have motion sickness, not in the slightest. No. I don't even like I have sick. fucking well, not motion sickness. Um, so much as I have the frame rate issues where it well, not frame rate. Well, 
It's the what is it? The your internal frame rate issue. No, it's what the fuck is it called? It's where if Oh yeah, I need to hockey this. There you go. Uh it's where if If I have a certain FOV, FOV, that's it. FOV. If I have a certain FOV, I kind of tend to get sick. I think that's just looking through a fisheye lens. No one can really look through a fisheye lens. Okay. Well, you seem to be able to play just fine with a lot of games that usually make me sick. Yeah. And? That's my point. Okay. But what else do you need? That's my point. Still don't like fish islands. Just... Yeah, but you seem to be. I'm talking about FOV. I'm not talking about fish islands, you fuck. I don't fuck with FOV. Well, that's. Then what do you have to contribute? Shut up. Stop talking just to talk. Jesus. Uh, no, my voice. It was fabulous. No, nothing is fabulous. Despite what the gay sex may tell you. Uh, nothing is fabulous in this world. No matter how much you go to its sparkles. I meant to say glitter, but sparkles. I have glitter. no idea what you're fucking talking about. I don't know either. So shut up. No. It's the problem. When you don't have anything to say, shut up. That's the problem with a lot of people in this world. It's like, when you don't have anything no. useful to say, just shut up. What? No. Oh, wow, that fucking storm. That was actually really good. Jeez. Kill that bitch, please. Just kill her. Oh, you guys really make that something go, right? Oh no, all morale is lost. I'm gonna TP over here. Wait for morale to be restored a bit. Hey, sup, bitch? Oh, we built two summoning cores. What a dumb fuck I am. Anyways, kill that, I suppose. And I still remember the bullshit of the Necron's base fully activating as soon as you get there to kill it and it wrecks your shit. Uh, that just sounds like you bam. Also, I fully promote that facing the Necrons is a race against time. Yes. Wow, look at that. Angie, get Necrons out here. The Necrons start out okay, and they continue to get better as opposed to everyone else, who kind of starts out shit and slowly builds up to being great. The Necrons kind of start out better than everyone else and just better with time. Uh, Necrons, you just Necrons said a wrong thing. What? The Necrons get better with time? You just said they start out, like, everyone else starts out shit and then gets better over time. Meanwhile, everybody, while the Necrons start out all right and get better with time. Yeah, their baseline infantry is amazing compared to pretty much everyone Their baseline else. infantry actually suck compared to everyone else. It's the fact that they get up for free most of the time. They... that's a very low chance of happening. The Necron Lord can get a thing that makes it 100% chance. That he has to get to tier... like, tier 2 to get. I'm pretty sure you require the greater summoning core to have that. Which, that's tier 3.5. Like, there is tier 4, and that's the final tier in this game. Well, actually, no. Tier 4.5 is literally a tier that not many get to, which is the Relic Unit. Yeah. Which, 4.5, I just kind of call it tier 4, because I'm Necrons. Oh, oh, the fucking Tau have the worst Relic Unit in the game. Come on, what's wrong with the Greater Narlock? The Greater Narlock will lose against everything else in one-on-one -on -one combat. Yeah, but he occupies. 
I don't know. I don't know. I still don't like the fact that as the town, my ultimate unit is only there to tie things up. Well, honestly, that's not your ultimate unit. Your ultimate unit, if you really wanted an ultimate unit to be an ultimate unit, you should just take the other whole other thing. Like, you should just... Yeah. Well, I guess you can still get the Greater Narlock, but honestly, a lot of people consider the ultimate unit of the Tau to be the... Uh, when you get the Montkai command post and you get the Hammerhead gunship. Yeah. No, I actually need to build. Sorry, guys, for any consideration that you might have about this. Okay. Anyways, in the interest of actually making somewhat of a living off of this, I need to stop the video and start again. Uh, that's 30 minutes. This has been RuperGod36 signing off. See you in the next part.